Hi everyone, I'm Valerie Landis from experience.com and I'm joined with the lovely ladies, Catherine and Brittany, for a discussion about egg freezing today. Brittany, would you like to go first and tell everyone who you are? Yeah, hi everyone, my name is Brittany Hawkins. I'm based in San Francisco. I'm the co-author of the book, Everything Egg Freezing and the co-founder of Alonzo Wellness. And I froze my eggs at age 33 when I was living in Cape Town. And I'm Catherine Hennedy, and I was in London, England, and I froze my eggs two years ago when I was 32 years old. Great. Well, we're all egg freezers, and during this pandemic of uh, extraordinary time that we have going on right now, thank you ladies for joining us and having this discussion about egg freezing because if you were in the middle of a cycle or thinking about egg freezing you're probably feeling a lot of anxiety right now with the fertility clinic shut down and um, the stay-at-home orders that are that are commanded of us so we have some tips and tricks and some key things to strategize while we wait for this pandemic to end and that can keep your fertility moving forward Let's start with um, some key facts and steps that we can take um, to impacting our fertility. Um, Brittany, do you want to tell us about some of the tests that we would take if we were um, seeing fertility doctors? Yeah, I mean, I think right now uh, is a bit of a challenge because uh, usually to kind of get the process started, you would go in and see a fertility doctor for your initial consultation. Um, now a lot of the clinics are offering digital or virtual consultations, so I would not feel you know any hesitance to just that initial um, consultation. However, you know during that that initial consultation, you would normally undergo something which is called an antral follicle count. This is one measure to help you or your doctor understand what your ovarian reserve looks like and potentially you know, how your body might respond to an overstimulation cycle. So the, the challenge is that normally you would go into the office and you, the doctor would use a transvaginal uh, wand. It would basically provide you with an ultrasound. They would start to look inside your ovaries and see you know, what, how many eggs are growing. Um, they're called sort of, they reach the size, which is considered an antrochal. Um, and that's actually just one measure that you might have to wait on. Um, but there are other blood tests that you can take and maybe Kat can walk you through those. Yeah, usually in that initial consultation, as well as just explaining what the egg from the receiver is, and taking a bit of a personal medical history, the fertility doctor will also run some blood tests. And so they're just testing the hormone levels. There's a few different ones there, but the primary one that they're looking at in conjunction with the AFC would be able to fill the count of that one, not the one, one, but we're just talking about it, is one called your AMH level. That's your anti malarian hormone. And so that, in conjunction with that ultrasound scan, kind of helps a bit to figure out your ovarian reserve and helps to figure out how you might respond to the freezing cycle. So during the egg freezing cycle, you'll then get yourself your really, you know, hormones, like your ovaries, and you feel lots, you feel lots of eggs. And, you know, that's actually not a process that is suitable for the group person, depending on the outcome of those tests at the initial consultation. So really, um, the doctor is walking you through the process and then trying to figure out if you're what they would call a good candidate to move ahead with egg freezing. And so, obviously, right now, Going into the doctor's office, going into the fertility clinic, isn't as easy in the step as it normally would be. But as Britt said, I just reiterate, give the clinic a call and you can start with a few medicine consultation and start getting those initial steps out of the way. And even though labs are restricted at the moment in a lot of cases, there may be some movement towards you perhaps being able to take. Um, a blood test for taking one test at home and having all the uh, review those results. It's kind of a fluid situation at the moment. So those are some of the key tests that you'll experience once you've determined which physician and clinic group and fertility clinic you're going to go to. But first, we need to decide on some of the key characteristics on whether egg freezing is even right for you. So maybe, Catherine, you can tell us a little bit about 
uh, some key factors you can think about both emotionally or physically or um, financially about egg freezing? Yeah, absolutely. 100% you're right that, you know, doing everything in motion with the clinic seems like a first step, but actually the first step happens inside your own head and with your own experience um, at home in isolation. That's the perfect time to start considering all of those questions that go into um, a decision about whether egg freezing could be right for you. Because on the one hand, you've got the medical aspect, which your doctor can help you with and understanding you know, medically what kind of position your body is in and whether you feel the candidate for it. But that's only half of the equation. The other half are all of these social factors, the financial factors, you know, your personal life goal. And so, you know, all of us have been in this situation personally as well. And we know that there's a lot that goes into the decision, not thinking. You want to really consider your finances and everything egg freezing we can get into them more but we're covering them a little bit right now um and this is kind of like a series of like very personal and social questions around the decisions so Brittany you want to maybe look at the first maybe one yeah I think you know it's a really um hard thing to kind of sit down and, and really be honest with yourself but um asking yourself key questions like First one being, how important is it for me to have a biological child of my own? Um, you know, there are other options, whether that's adoption or donor egg, you know, there are all kinds of different pathways to, to parenthood. So just really getting to grips with like how much that really matters to you. And then the second thing would be, you know, your realistic timeline. Um, you know, I decided to freeze my eggs because I was living in a foreign country. I didn't know where I was going to go next. Like there was just so many unknowns. And um, so for me, it was just a matter of uh, trying to kind of chart that out and say, by this age, what will I, you know, what will my fertility look like? And then from there, actually, potentially the more important question is, and how many children do you want? Because, you know, something that I considered was that maybe I'll be okay for the first one. I mean, hopefully, <laughs> but then what happens if I want to, you know, and, and then what will my fertility look like at that point? So I think it's just really starting to be, you know, it's hard, but honest with yourself and sort of creating a little bit of a, a fertility vision board as to kind of where you see your your self in the in the version of um, parenthood that you want, or maybe parenthood isn't actually important to you in the end, but it is important to kind of have that conversation with yourself because it's not something that any doctor would be able to help you with. Yeah, that's a good point, Brittany, because egg math is a key part of the fertility journey. While we may not feel old, women are born with all the eggs that they'll ever have. And so we need to make sure that we protect our fertility future by freezing our eggs if we want to be a biological parent someday in the future or be able to extend our family if we have a child naturally in the beginning. Um, or maybe the first kid we have naturally, the second one we might need fertility treatments. So if you freeze your eggs, you extend your biological clock, um, kind of like men. Men can make new sperm every single day, but women only have a finite amount of eggs. And so that's where the fertility testing comes in and be able to give your levels and have a baseline of where you stand now, today, and then hopefully impact your fertility future. Maybe Catherine, you can talk about some of the key things that we can do while we wait for the fertility clinics to open, reopen again. Absolutely, yeah, we'll go into those. But um, just before that, I just want to quickly want to add in on the end there that you know lifestyle is huge, and that's what we'll be talking about. And it's a part of you know the decision making process. And it could I please be right for you? is age. It is the number one factor around fertility decline and um, that is going to be a big part of how the doctor will cancel you too. So, you know, your age is the consideration and, you know, let's say if you're 25, you know, maybe you feel like it's less pressing in your, in your life plan. If you're 35, it's something you're going to start, you know, leaning towards. Um, 
whilst definitely that fertility form of the case of those live things has been shown to be nonsense, it's actually a gradual decline, but it does gradually decline throughout your thirties and you know, that's something to be really cognizant of. So yeah, age number one factor, and you should factor that into your decision. But then um, very excitingly, there's another side to it, which is your role in your fertility. And right now, when we're all sitting at home and we've got a bit more time in our hands. Yeah, and it is now beyond question, according to the ASRM, which is the American Society for Reproductive Medicine, with a top professional body for fertility doctors in the USA, that lifestyle factors can influence the outcome of fertility treatment. So, like egg freezing. And so, from our perspective, you know, if you're going to do this, you want to save the best quality eggs you can, hopefully as many eggs as you can, and, you know, get the most time for the back part of this experience. So, um, yeah, I'll just let Britt walk you through, through our process and that and how we've created some strategies. Yeah, I think it's just, um, you know, something that I thought was super interesting in our research was basically that, you know, while, as Valerie mentioned, you are born with all the eggs you'll ever have, they actually sit there in a, in a state of complete dormancy until about three months prior to ovulation. So basically, a, an egg is sort of released from your ovarian reserve, and in that three to four months, it undergoes rapid maturation and growth, and most importantly, it undergoes a really important chromosomal processing. Uh, chromosomal processing is a fancy word for talking about how we achieve egg quality. So egg quality, you know, we talk about a lot in our book, and it's, it, that's kind of the core of what creates a healthy child. So, for example, about 40 to 50 percent of miscarriages are due to low quality eggs. So there are some some really real reasons you'd want to be focused on your egg quality. And unfortunately, along with the number of eggs you have in your ovarian reserve, the quality of your eggs also declines with age. So it's really about kind of you know knowing that as we age, that our bodies are less capable of creating chromosomally normal eggs. So during that three months, they're, you know, highly susceptible to those lifestyle choices that you make because they're sort of unprotected by your ovaries. So you really do have a role to play in actually helping both protect your eggs and uh, enhance them. So not to get too technical, but basically there's kind of three different aspects of generating quality eggs. One is preventing oxidative stress. So that's, you know, and, and if you get extreme oxidative stress, that's inflammation. So oxidative stress being things like smoking, which can actually cause damage to your eggs. So then, you know, creating ways to protect them from that uh, is one thing. Secondly, it's the fact that, um, you know, we need to give, supply them with enough energy. There's an enormous amount of energy through something called mitochondrial output that actually helps our eggs get to all the stages of maturation. I mean, if you think about it, you're you're maturing the future of, you know, a child. So it's pretty incredible how much, you know, it takes of our bodies to create this. So the problem is that mitochondrial production uh, just kind of dissipates over time. So you want to give your body an extra boost. The third thing is hormonal balance. So hormonal balance is important because egg maturation is a highly estrogenic process. And if you think about your hormones as this massive signaling system, it basically, you know, when things are all in, uh, in harmony, they actually signal your eggs to mature at every stage of growth. So all of these three things, you know, knowing that this is such a delicate process and, and chromosomal processing is very, you know, extraordinary if you think about it. So you really do have a role to play in kind of getting the best quality eggs at the end of, you know, by the time you get to your retrieval. Unfortunately for all of those three things, there's no kind of silver bullet. It's a combination of incremental changes across lots of areas of your life. So that could be your diet, getting the appropriate amount of the right type of exercise, getting enough good quality sleep, certain food supplements and, you know, many other areas which holistically um, can add up a big change and so giving yourself the best chance of getting the best outcome of the treatment yeah that's great so we'll put the link for the app 
and the websites for them to access during the COVID crisis and be able to download that for free right now. And then we're telling both of your egg freezing stories on experience.com. And you're welcome to ask any questions to both Catherine and Brittany, and we will help answer all your egg freezing questions. Uh, one key thing I just want to mention is that only mature level two eggs are actually frozen at the time of retrieval. So it's about getting enough mature eggs to mature at the same time during your stimulation, your two week hormone stimulation. And now is a great time while we're stuck at home and have the home mandate order to research which clinic you think would be the best fit for you, start asking what the prices are so you can start factoring in your finance piece of this puzzle because it really does vary depending on where you live. And then um, researching different pharmacies which we have links and resources that you can access. So feel free to please leave any of your detailed questions. We're here to help you. And then we're going to follow up this um, information session with a Facebook and Instagram live. We'd love to know what uh, lifestyle factors you're curious about and if you have any specific questions on which fertility meds to take or which fertility foods you should incorporate in your diet. Um, we can have both Brittany and Catherine weigh in on those. Uh, choices and uh, give examples of other people that have had good outcomes based off of changing these um, key lifestyle factors. So we, we we're really curious to hear what you have to say. And so leave them in the comments below and we'll help answer those questions next time. So thanks so much ladies for joining us today. And we look forward to all of your questions and thanks for, for tuning in. Bye. Thanks guys. Everybody.